The Tabletop Bellhop is here to answer your gaming and game night questions. So we can always use more questions. If you've got a question for us, you can email it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to our website and click on Ask the Bellhop. Well, tonight's question comes from longtime fan and supporter of the show, Math Guy Dave, who asked us, what are some game recommendations for getting to know the boy she brings over? All right. So to me, for one thing, that's a little too specific. So starting off, I want to broaden that one out a bit and remove some gender bias from there. Right. I want this to start off being getting to know the person they bring over. I think that's a a better topic and not not making some assumptions there. Now, even with that, this is still kind of loaded and potentially problematic. Yeah, I mean, well, it's it's all fun and games to joke about being that protective parent, you know, talking about the shotgun collection for, you know, the dads uh, of daughters and such like that. I still feel it's kind of detrimental in many ways. While I've encouraged my daughter and son to be savvy and capable of making their own decisions. And am I going to like all those decisions? Heck no. <laughs> but does that make it my right to interfere? Also, no. Uh, unless there's a danger with the person, I'm not going to step in. And I kind of feel uncomfortable with the whole 20 questions, uh, interview their uh, their significant other type thing, even in a game form. Now, if the kid wants to play a game because it's a fun game, that's fine. And if they want the parents to take part, awesome. But that's kind of a different story than the official get to know you game. I don't know. I, I kind of disagree with that. I want to know the people that are important in my daughter's lives. And it's not about being invasive or grilling. It's just spending time together, having a shared experience and getting to know each other. And board games are pretty much my favorite way to socialize. And spending time together over a board game, I think, is a fantastic way to get to know someone. Well, and, that, and that's totally fair, because I think it's it's not that as much that I don't want to know them. But I feel, for me anyway, to be more organic then let's sit down and play a game and get to know you. Uh, my family has always been more about sitting around the kitchen, uh, do, you know, making dinner or washing up afterwards and just chatting and that kind of uh, organic learning about other people. Um, while gaming has been more about, you know, sitting down to play the game. Yeah, I do agree that like springing a game on someone with the ulterior motive to get to know them, um, especially in that judgmental way, right? Like that's not cool. If like, I, I, it just seems a little, I don't know, sneaky, underhanded, not cool, overbearing, overprotective, all those kind of things you don't want to be. But I don't see a problem with choosing a good get to know you game to learn more about your kids, potential partners or their friends or heck your sister's friend or your uncle's new beau or whatever it happens to be. And the thing is, though, it shouldn't be sneaky. It shouldn't be underhanded. It shouldn't be, we're going to sneak this game on the table so I get to know you. Um, we're not, uh, one of the jokes we made earlier is, we're going to suggest Cards Against Humanity, and it's a trap. Because if you say you want to play, obviously there's a problem, right? We don't, that's not what you want to do. But I think the key to this is, as we mentioned many times on the show before, and we sometimes refer to it as session zero, but you don't need a full session for this, but that is buy-in. If the kids and their significant others are up for playing games, you can suggest some of the games we're going to list later tonight. So personally, I feel like I can get to know someone pretty well while playing, say, Hamburg. But then I feel that answer might not be in the spirit of the question. Yeah, and I get that. I, I do get that. And honestly, because of that, um, because Dana would rather sit there and play a heavy game to get to know you rather a game where you're answering questions or picking cards or drawing things or anything like that. I think what we will do is broaden things up just a bit more. So let's just talk about great to get to know each other games. For with no purpose, no ulterior motive, no, we want to find out if this person's right for this person. It's just, hey, we got a bunch of gamers together. Let's learn, learn something about each other. And games that work for that should work for Math Guy Dave, but are also great to get to know people that you're gaming with, like getting to know the public gamers. Like we host a lot of public play events, and I'd like to get to know some of the gamers that are around without sitting down and grilling them. And a great way to do that is to play certain types of games together where you're interacting and asking, oh, why'd you say that? Why'd you do that? Or how come you went with this? Or, oh my God, I can't believe you chose that. Really? That's what you like? You know, those type of games, it just gets people talking. And then the people get to know each other better and then they're more comfortable, they're more willing to play games together. And what often happens is friendships are made. And then those splinter off into separate game groups and you end up finding new home groups. Almost every single one of my current friends I met through gaming because of things like that. Yeah, I think my biggest sure. problem is I don't like people. 
Um, I, <laughs> that's, that. that's really the, the root of the problem of my entire problem with this topic is that I don't want to meet people. I don't want to know more about you. I've got my friends. I, I don't need more, but that's me. <laughs> that's a, that's a me problem. Not Fair what enough. we're dealing with on this topic tonight. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm in the same boat with the, I don't want to play the get to know you icebreaker party games, but I, I think we'll broach that later in the list. And, and to be honest, it's it, I don't like the icebreaker ones, right? The the you just went to a conference and everyone's in the room and they make you all whatever say two truths and a lie. You know us mm-hmm. well enough. This is the tabletop bellhop gaming podcast. We're not going to recommend those kind of games. We're not going to recommend the twenty question games. We're talking about games where you're going to learn things about people, but it's not going to be you know their deep dark secret or the 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 truth or dare, right? So. Going with that, what I do want to talk about is what we look for in a get to know you game, which with the three of us is possibly not all the same thing. And honestly, the first one kind of goes with what I was just saying. The number one thing is it's not personal. It's not super personal. I don't want to play truth or dare. I don't want to hear intimate secrets. I don't want to hear that secret you never told anyone else. That is not the kind of thing I want to do at a board game night. That makes me uncomfortable, let alone the person like it's just someone playing the game. If that's going on around me, that just makes me feel ugh. Uh, the kinds of icebreaker games I want. Show me your preferences, right? Like preferences. What, what do you prefer? Star Wars, Star Trek, right? Now, it's not personal information. It's not deep, dark secrets. Ra- would you rather is a better question to me than have you ever, right? Would you rather do this or this? I don't, you can answer however you want, but have you ever done this? Now you're getting personal. And while I think fans of our show are very clearly aware, as Will mentioned earlier, Cards Against Humanity is never going to be on our list. And I say this powerfully as someone who has had to play a Cards Against Humanity knockoff with my in-laws. I showed up at a a work convention once and someone had brought that as an icebreaker. It was an awful experience. Yeah, Yeah, we're just going to take the entire group of meant to offend Here's an excuse to say something nasty and not feel guilty about it. Plus, also dog whistling to see who else is at the tables. And just throw all those out. Okay, they're all gone. We'll just pretend those games don't exist anymore. If those are your jam, feel free to play them with your own personal group. As we said many times, not every game is for everyone. But we don't think those games are for very many people at all. The next thing I want is a real game. I want a game. I, I don't want a silly party game. I don't want two truths and a lie. I, I want some kind of structure. I want like like maybe I want scoring, but most importantly, I want decision points. I want people to be able to make meaningful decisions that have an impact. I want games with decisions that matter. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard to argue that as gamers, we want games uh, that real games Uh, doesn't have to be Hamburg, but it should be more than, you know, something made up on the spot. Oh, I think it goes without saying I want a real game. I don't necessarily <laughs> want a game that everyone else wants. Um, but decision points are needed. That's bare minimum. That's where you get insight into other humans. Random silliness isn't going to provide that. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Like, right? Like your your game of gelatinous, where all you're doing is rolling dice and passing dice. Is like the only way you're going to get to know someone is if they start talking about stuff outside the game. Now, my favorite get to know your games, and here's where I think we all disagree, or at least I disagree, or you two disagree with me, is I like games that have a discussion after the play, right? I, I like the game where you do a thing and then you talk about it after. That That's what, to me, is, is the best part about these get to know you games. This is where I'm going to actually learn something about people and where I'm going to be fascinated by a choice you made that isn't what I would have done. Like when the round's done and you go, you know, why did you choose that? Or why did you draw that thing? Or wait, okay, how the heck are those three cards connected in any way? To me, that's the most fun part of these get to know you games is it's just seeing how other people think. It's not as like getting to know their private details, right? It's just like, wow, you made a connection I never would have made. That fascinates me. See, I actually feel like this is where icebreakers can um, break me. Um, (laughs) If you're not outgoing by nature, this can really make someone feel like they're being put on the spot. And if done wrong, I think this can make someone feel like you are grilling them. Yeah, I'm with D here. And I think this is a real sticking point because it can hinge on who it is that's involved. Uh, Some people you're not going to get a good reaction from if uh, you as a person of authority. Again, if if we're jumping back to the original question here and you are an adult of the, you know, parent of the child who is Mm -hmm. got another significant over you are a person of authority and if you're asking them probing questions 
that sort of plays into my concern with the whole thing. Um, even if it's done in fun, because of that imbalance of authority, things can sure. can feel weird. Yeah, no, right. This is why I'm thinking more about games that can put the other person at ease and you can all sit and enjoy a shared experience and get to know each other better. Yeah, and again, I, I'm not talking about the games where you're asking probing questions and you're not being accusatory. Just that bit at the end of the round of Dixit where you're like, whoa, why'd you pick that card? Or when you finish dubious, and you're like, okay, every time you were asked a question, you were talking about the boots. What's with the boots? What's going on? Which to me just isn't personal enough. And, and I guess, I guess if you're a person of authority and you're asking a younger teen, you're like, I oh, don't know, I just wanted to talk about boots. I, could, I guess there is an imbalance there. So I do see what you're saying. But like the games we're going to suggest and we're talking about to me aren't those deep dive 20 questions kind of games. And again, we're we're not talking specifically about that imbalance authority uh, parent and, yeah. and child situation either. So I think that about top covers it for our introduction topic here. And now on to what we think are some of the best get to know you games. And as usual, this list is in no particular order. All right. I starting off with personal preference because this is honestly a game I played with Deanna. And I, if I remember at the time, it was one of her favorite games. I think you called it that. Um, where this is just a true classic get to know you game. Now, what I like here, despite the name personal preference, there's no probing questions here. You just get a list of four things. Everyone ranks them in the order of their preference and people bet what they think you're, you picked, right? Like that must be your number one, your two, number three. So it's like you get four random cards, say motorcycle, plane, boat, car. And there's nothing tell you even how to rank these. Like what would you rather own or which would you rather drive or which have you been in? None of that's there. It's kind of up to you to go car, motorcycle, or plane, boat, and decide, well, I'm going to go by the number of wheels because uh, a boat has none, a motorcycle only has two, a car has four, and planes have lots on all their different landing pads. And people are like, what? Why would you do it by number of wheels, right? That's, that's kind of what I liked about that game. Now, I admit, questions may get personal after, right? When people are like, well, wait, you'd, you'd rather be on a motorcycle than on a, in a car? Do you realize how dangerous those are, right? And you could get into those heated discussions. So you do have to watch for that after chat. I don't think I ever said this was my favorite game. If I, I, that's redacted, please. Um, okay. It, it was Didn't okay. I remember like playing it in the late 80s, or early 90s when it first came out, playing it at my aunt's house and being like, this is not terrible. I will say, even when I was playing it with you a handful of years later, it was already dated and now it would be exceptionally dated because it's not quite as generic as you're remembering. And I remember having movies and movie stars and um, a lot of things that, you know, if we tried to play this with the kids, they wouldn't have a clue what a lot of the cards were, I think. So. OK, fair enough. Probably has the concept um, telestrations problem. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Fair enough. And that's another one where. Even if the questions afterwards as to why they aren't going to be get, aren't getting personal, you're putting someone into a position where they may feel like they're going to be judged. Even if it's all just a friendly game and everyone's good, if you're the boyfriend going, oh, crap, do I see a motorcycle? I love motorcycles, but do I see a motorcycle better because they're going to kill me if they if they think I'm going to take their daughter on a motorcycle? You know, that sort yeah, of thing fair. could could be uh, could be for some pressure. Um, depending again, depending on things, I don't, I, I haven't played this, so I don't know what the games are like. If it's just asking you between your favorite, you know, uh, uh, 80s teen movies, that may be a little, a little different. Uh, Even so then, though, I could see, see the kids sitting there going, okay, I, 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 I probably have to say like Breakfast Club. Um, um, but I better not say, um, um, uh, I'm trying to blank on the movie I was trying to think of. Candles because it has not aged well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, I was thinking the one with I like the smell of napalm in the morning. It was oh, yeah, what yeah. popped in my apocalypse, apocalypse now. now, right? <laughs> Where you're like, well, I better pick pretty in pink over apocalypse now. Yeah, because apocalypse know. now is a teeny movie from the eighties. Cool. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I remember coming up in the game was it wasn't it would just be like movies or mm -hmm. I, I remember there was like occupations and I remember actually arguing with my cousin because he thought I'd pick scientist over astronaut. He's like, but you're scared of heights. You're scared of that. And I'm like, yeah, but it's dream job. It'd be awesome to be an astronaut. <laughs> He's like, but you like science. I'm like, right. So I can be an astronaut. <laughs> My first uh, game on the list is just classic card games like Euchre, uh, specifically games like Euchre, where you're playing with partners uh, or teams. Because uh, I feel like you can learn a lot from some about someone by watching how they, they partner up and mm -hmm. uh, do even more so than maybe asking random questions. How you treat someone when there is stress and a need for cooperation, but limited communication can really say a lot about you. 
Mm -hmm. uh, sort of half of a relationship right there is just not communicating well, but or, or learning to communicate when you when you when there are communication limits. Oh, can't disagree with that. Sean, Sean's going more deep than than <laughs> I thought of when, when I made this list originally. I, I was stuck on the how do I get to know these people? And he's like, no, I'm looking for the deep moves and the deep thoughts <laughs> and the, who's going to betray who. Oh, that goes back to our <laughs> chat room suggesting diplomacy. All right. Next one I have is the chameleon. Um, again, the thing I really like is the, the seeing how other people think. Right. So the neat parts in this game, there's just a lot of neat stuff going on with like word association. And then there's a whole deduction uh, set, uh, part of the game where you can see the card and you can see all the possible answers and the coming up with one word clues. And I think you can learn quite a bit by how people answer the questions, what words they pick and use. And when they're the role of chameleon, how they try to mislead the other players. I think it's a it's a cool kind of fun party game. But you just it's again, it's that that seeing how other people think or like, why the heck would you say that? Man, I would have never man. Or you totally fooled me with that one, because when you said this, that meant that this person meant this. So you had me doubting that person. I love that about that game. I don't even want to get into games to show you how good people are at lying. That's an That's entirely true. different <laughs> all right, what do you um, got for us, T? All right, so I've got a secret weapon here that can help you make whatever game that you pick a success, and that is picking the right game for the person. And I think theme can be a big draw for people. So presumably, and I'm going back to the original question, okay? This is someone your kid's been interacting with for a while, so you may know a thing or two about them. Like if your kids mention that they share a love of watching Star Trek, then you pick something sci-fi, or you know they already play D&D &D on the weekends, and you can pull out Kiss the Goblin. And I think Kiss the Goblin is a good choice in general because it's light, it's fun, the questions are quirky, and they're not too probing. And I know it's already a hit with my eldest and her group of friends. Yeah, especially with the the more commonality of D and D and and those tropes. Even even if you're not a role mm -hmm. player, the tropes of the uh, the alignment grid are so mm -hmm. well known that it's something that people can sort of feel comfortable about. Uh, especially if, you know, oh, you know, your parents are, are role players and, 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 you know, they, you can connect that way. Yeah. I recommend that. That was on my list. You're, uh, you're playing a role and you're not actually answering questions about yourself. So there's that one step removed there. Similarly, uh, my next one is psychobabble. I don't know exactly what you're going to learn about someone playing this messed up dream based Cthulhu mythos social deduction game, but you're going to learn something. Um, I, again, what fascinates me is what dreams people come up with like, and, and what questions people ask the other inmates and what the person playing the psychoanalyst does to try to deduce which card everyone's on. And every time I have watched a group play this, it has been a unique experience. It's everyone plays it slightly different. Some people give detailed answers, some one word answers. And what I do like about the game is it supports both. Right. So if you're that role player, quick on your feet, good at improv, tell a story right away, you can play. And that kind of shy person who takes a bit to think about things can just give the shorter answers and the game still works. And this one is so group dependent that there can be a group of six people playing. As soon as one person leaves, there's a different vibe. Or if one person joins in, and I find that exceedingly fascinating about psychobabble. Yeah, I'm not sure what yeah. is to be learned, but yeah. there's definitely some experiences there, and 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 you'll definitely pick up vibes, if not any specific details about people. For my next one, I got the art project. I know I'm recommending a co-op game, but hear me out. I think the right co-op game can be a great way to get to know someone. Group discussion where you're trying to figure out how to beat the game together, that's much less high pressure than tell me all about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it could get someone who is more quiet or shy to open up and take part. I picked the art project in specific because there is some quarterbacking. And I think for this, I want that interaction, the push and pull of telling other folks what to do. And I find this game really only works when everyone at the table works together to solve the puzzle. So that, that commonality of working together to beat something, that's a great way to get to know someone. And while there's, there's quarterbacking of a sort, uh, if you're, if you're introducing someone new to it, like I did with tech and his daughter at, uh, the last Walkerville event, um, it's, it's a, a teaching quarterback. It's, it's, it's a, it's an explaining <laughs> things and trying to offer help, mm -hmm. uh, to people who have never played the game before, uh, and that really actually works well with that game. 
uh, especially because of all the different maps and things. And you can sort of, you can tailor things, you know, oh, hey, <laughs> let's have a lighter experience. Maybe we're going to play Egypt and you get that free movement down the, down the path or, oh, let's, let's, let's sort of ramp it up a little bit and we're going to go try Norway or whatever. Um, and, 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 you know, the extra movement costs and things like that. You can tailor things to the group a little more as well as having that. Uh, quarterbacking through teaching experience mm-hmm. rather than just no no what you need to do is this i like i almost hesitate to call it quarterbacking in that game but there there has to be group discussion you're not just doing your own thing without other people's input or you're not playing the game you're definitely you're just gonna lose so no where, where quarterbacking comes in is when one player is like no play that card right that that can happen in that game right. but in general you're discussing should i play this should i do this we need a this Can you get me that? Are you going to do that? But if you get an experienced player in with some people who don't, they can be like, oh, I can see the back of your card has that clue on it. You're going to play that card. And then I'm going to play this card, which will open up this and we'll get this crate here. And then on your turn, you're going to use the gas to move here. That's when it gets to quarterback. Well, I don't think the cooperative part is quarterbacking at all. Darkly Bite mentions it right. It's the alpha gamers you need to watch out for. That's the the, the key. Is that a furry thing? (laughs) The reason I said the art project is because it has that part where you have to talk and work together. There's some games where I say, hey, I like this co-op because there is no chance for quarterbacking the way the mechanics are presented in a way that you are doing your solo activity in in a in a group to beat the game together. But but that one, you have to have that. Yeah, I guess a co-op games in general are a good way to get to know people, right? Everyone having to work together, be on the same page. And I think puzzle based ones are possibly better than some of the other types. All right, next one I have is a rather odd party game called Mr. Lovenstein Presents No Context. And honestly, this is one of my top picks because it's super subjective and abstract. The comics in the game don't mean anything on their own. And the way people make different connections with them is fascinating to me. Like one player may pick cards based on them being similar colors. You're like, we're all green. Oh, that's why they you're trying to guess that card. Okay. Or maybe they have something in common. There's a lot of animals on all of them. So obviously the proper card's the animal one. Whereas another player could pick it and be like, Okay, I have no idea what happened, but then they tell the story like, well, last year I took a field trip up to Fergus, Ontario, and on the bus we passed a bird, and you're like, whoa, okay, cool, that's awesome. This is the one I love the most for that after-round discussion, where players can explain what they chose, the panels they did choose. Now, again, the thing to watch is that grilling, right? You don't want to get to the angle, well, that was a dumb, why would you pick that, right? That is not the right way to play this game. Instead, you want people to volunteer. And if I remember correctly, one of the actual rules in the game is once you do present at the end, you are supposed to explain why you took the cards you did. But again, you're not giving away any personal information unless you want to. There's no probing here unless the person who made the picking decides to pull out the example of why they chose the My PP Hurts card. Right. So that that covers it right there. Um if you are playing this with your child's potential partner, I think some of the cards are slightly risque and that might make <laughs> me uncomfortable. Go. Fair, fair. Again, I kind of, in my mind, I broaden this out to just great get to know you games. So I'm never bringing someone over to get to know them and introducing anything that has a PP card like that. Just <laughs> keep you on the topic of PP cards. Uh, my next <laughs> concept are drawing games. Uh, so games like um, Telestrations or Monstrosity, these allow you to get a little bit of insight into how other people listen and explaining things, which can be important. Uh, and that's something that these party style drawing games can be great for uh, with the extra bon- uh, bonus that while they are structured as games, the scoring isn't always that important. So you can take that sort of competitive nature out and, and just have some fun with it. Um, and then as an extra bonus, with the new rules for monstrosity, uh, you can keep an eye and find out if the person is erasing everyone else's work and drawing their own in and, and you know, d- t- <laughs> try to take ownership of stuff that way. Now, I'm going to add on to that one with a newer drawing game because uh, a lot of the stuff we've talked about already are, are older games. And now and then we do like to talk about the new hotness. So I'm going to throw, throw a new drawing game out there. This one is coming from Wise Wizard Games. And it's part of their new uh, Wacky Wizard Games imprint where they're they're making more, you know, accessible Barnes and Noble, Target, mass market style games. And that is caution signs. Um, what this one is, is you are going to get two words and make a caution sign, right? Like the 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 um, 
yellow diamond, orange diamond, whatever color you want to call it, diamond where you mash the two things up like Ghost Farmer. And you're like, warning, Ghost Farmer ahead. Now, what I like about this one is you've got all the drawing fun of telling the of Mondrosity, but there's no voting in this one. There's no scoring points for that. Instead, one of the players is actually like not drawing during the round and instead has to try to figure out what two words everyone's thing got, like everyone's sign, what, what they are. And to make it interesting, you mix in some extras so it's not all the ones and it's not pure deduction and everything else. I just really like this. We got to try this at Gamma Expo and I, I thought it was fascinating as a new style of drawing game because, you know, since win, lose, and draw and, and, and um, what's a Pictionary is the one that won out out of those two over the years for some reason. Telestrators and Fonstra, there's not a lot of new things coming out as far as drawing games are concerned. And to me, Caution Signs was fantastic. Okay, I'm going to go back to the whole idea of working together to solve a puzzle. I think escape room style games are mm. great get to know you games. If you've ever done like a non board game, real life escape room with strangers, you know what I mean? You can learn a lot about folks and how mm. they think in a very short time. Um, I think a great way to get to know someone is by working together to solve puzzles and beat a game. I think particularly the style of game where there are multiple types of puzzles um, and a variety of styles. And you work together, but you might also swap off and each work on bits independently. So games like Dimensions from Mysterious Package Co. or La Famiglia from Puzzling Pursuits, I think those would make great get-to-know-you games. Yeah, especially, I mean, there's a reason why there's a whole industry based around getting, you know, corporate groups <laughs> together to go mm -hmm. and do escape rooms. Uh, because, you know, someone, uh, someone somewhere figured out that it's a good team-building uh, device. <laughs> now, the only problem, of course, is... These are mostly one and done games. So you have to yeah. have one around for when, you know, <laughs> to introduce to people. And, and that can uh, that can be problematic because you want to play it and you want to get it done. You don't want to have to say, OK, I've got two dimensions over here, but we're not going to play it until we get the right group <laughs> of people around so that we can all get together. And let's see how well Deanna gonna... handles that. <laughs> I'm just going to keep a little pile of exit games and they're just there for when my kids exactly. bring home people to introduce that's what go. I was just thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm like, so you want to date my daughter? Here we have. If you have to complete exit the haunted roller coaster in under 15 minutes. That that oh. sounds a lot like Saw, the parenting style. And I'm, I'm not sure yeah. that's the vibe you, <laughs> yeah, you really want to give. Probably not a good thing. <laughs> probably not. All right. One that I'm sure most people could guess was going to be on this list at some point is Dixit. Uh, this is another one of those picture choosing games, right? Similar to no context, but... You're, you're picking a card from your hand, you're describing the card, everyone else is throwing a card in to match your clue, and then everyone votes on which one they think was yours, right? That's pretty much the whole game. What I like about this one, the reason I put it on the list, and, and I don't know why it works this way with Dixit, and like I introduced this game to two new groups over the last two public play events, and it happened both times, is no one has ever had to ask anyone why they played or picked the card, because people are really willing to volunteer that information. They're like, oh, I'm glad you picked my card. I picked it because. So that was the part I thought was fascinating about this game. It's like, it just gets people talking. Like, yeah, that first round, everyone's a little stifled and not sure. But once they get into it, you hear the group laughing and talking about the art. No, oh, I thought that was a this or, oh, see, that one made me think this. But it's never been the interrogation. It's always just been volunteered information. Now, another part is that you can get to know each other just by the cards they choose and the clues they give, even if you don't have that after talk. But I'd be shocked. Like, I, if you've been in a Dixit game where no one talked at the end, I would love to hear about it because I've never seen it happen. Okay. I'm going to suggest another mystery game, but this one is for very specific reasons. My recommendation is Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion. And the reason I'm recommending it as a good get-to-know-your-kids partner game, and yes, I know we broaden the topic. I'm taking it back again. <laughs> is that this game is the single most fun experience we've ever had at the table as a family. The game had a lot of exploration and discovery. It required us to think and to work as a group. And it also had lots of silly, giggle-worthy moments. It's very structured in that a lot of the game consists of reading it loud from various books. And I think that could be comforting to someone who might be nervous if we're talking about playing with someone we don't know well. Um, so as a way to get someone to feel welcome and connected and part of the group, I think this game would be a huge win. It is a one and done. You solve the puzzles, you solve the mystery, and then it, the whole thing is spoiled for you. But it isn't used up and it can be reset. And we gave our copy to some friends, but I'm wishing we had kept it because 
I think it's now almost been long enough that I I have forgotten who committed the mystery, and I probably wouldn't remember the answers to the uh, the various puzzles. So we we could enjoy the game one more time all over again. My only worry with this one, getting back to the original topic, is whole, how old are the kids at this point? Like if your your eighteen year old is bringing over their nineteen year old new boyfriend, they might be a little turned off by the Scooby Doo theme. But I liked it. Scooby Doo's for everyone. <laughs> well, I think there's actually a, there's a there's a young enough you're watching Scooby Doo for the first time, and there's an old enough you remember Scooby Doo. But in between there, there might yeah. be a, a sort of gap. I'm not sure. Um, I actually think our kids don't really know who the heck Scooby Doo is, and they still enjoyed this game. So I I think it it is um, fun and stands on its own likes, but. Yeah, I'm I'm more worried the uh the, as you walk out of the room the kid, what the heck is your mom breaking on? What is this a kids game? Right? <laughs> just 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 that that the perception of it being a kids game. The look, yeah. the one of the things we complained about, uh, if I remember correctly, when we reviewed that game, was that it's it's think here, it's not just for little kids. Now little kids with parents, great, but and that that's all I'd worry about. All right, here's another new one. Um, another one available from pre-order. This one, Skybound Tabletop. Look at this, Mo, like new hotness, two times in one list. And then we're going to be talking about some even hotter stuff later tonight. Um, this is another one from from uh, Skybound Tabletop. This is Contra Banter, as in like contraband. And the reason it's called this and why it's called banter is this is an improv conversation game. Uh, when I originally wrote this, I, I, I wrote it as a, a storytelling game. It's not storytelling. It's a conversation game where one group asks the other group a question. And then that other group, the, the, the active group, starts telling a story based on the questions asked and the story can go back and forth and you can ask questions and it's a conversation um while having this conversation you're trying to slip in three secret words and then the other team's trying to guess them and there's some more rules to that and then if they don't guess a word you got to go into a second round and slip in the same word again and so on that's not the important part the thing is we got to try this at gamma expo and i think this is going to be a huge hit with the right group Now, the big problem with this one is, of course, that being put on the spot, right? You need those improv skills. You need to be able to scrape up a bull uh, where we're 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 not explicit at this point. But you got you got to sling some bull um, and be able to do that on the spot to be able to play this game and play it well. That is my biggest concern. But I think for people who could just, you know, improv, strike up a conversation about, you know, uh, Centrum Vitamins and slip in the escape rooms somehow into the conversation, I think they're going to really love this game. Yeah, you've, you've got to be, you know, that sort of um, the drama games, the improv games. Uh, you've, you've got to understand the concept of yes and. Um, it, it's There's a little bit of a, of a learning curve there and a, and a comfort curve, again, as, as Dia has indicated. Uh, there are some people who are just going to hate that. And there's a time in my life where I would have. Um, uh, I have become more outgoing and willing to do things, even if I don't necessarily always admit to loving it. Uh, but I, I do, I can improv and do that. It's just whether or not I, I want to. No, this one isn't really yes ending because it's, it's, a, you're telling the story and then the other people might ask questions, but still the, the initial conversation starter still has to be there. Um, so along that lines, if you've got a drama kit on your hands, then I'm definitely thinking dubious. I know my bro- um, our daughter brought dubious to school to play with the board game club, and she goes to an art school, and all the drama department kids went wild for the game. So if the person you want to get to know better is a drama kit or just the outgoing type, that would be my first choice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Dubious is a fantastic one because Dubious is, while you are explaining things and you're talking about things, it's completely abstract. Um, yes, yeah. you could probably analyze things if you really wanted to, but you could also just completely, you know, off the top of your head, have fun. And there's so much thinking. And if you play it with enough, with, with a big enough group of people uh, within the limits of the game, uh, there's so much thinking and interaction going on that no one really feels called out. Uh, I could see as a, like a three player game with your, <laughs> your, your child, their, their significant other and you, that could be a little awkward, but you know, four or yeah. five people at the table becomes a whole different situation. Plus I think like the, the nice part about that one is you're going to learn things about people, but not the things you'd learn asking them the same questions because they're in characters, but you're going to also learn about the people and how they think and how they react to things, how quick they can be on their, their feet. Right. It's, it's that once removed, we talked about earlier. And I also think this is a great introduction to role-playing games. Like, if you do want to um, 
move into role playing games or 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 and creating characters or any games that require more of that, I think Dubious is a fantastic gateway point. And I'm going to interject with a squirrel here because um, this isn't on our list. And I've got to say, like, we, we are the tabletop bellhop game and possibly usually top board games. But I think there are a number of role playing games that would be fantastic for getting to know people. Um, you, you learn a lot of people, a lot about people by being in the same D&D group or cyberpunk group or whatever game uh, as your preference. Now, a game I didn't think of at first um, until I actually started Googling, you know, what are some good get to know you games, as we often do when we do these topics to see if there are um, games we missed or I didn't think of. And that is Codenames. That was on almost every list of get to know you games. And our chat room even called it out at the start of the show. And I think it's a great choice. It's a good one. This has, this has the benefit of having that co-op thing Deanna was talking about, but in teams. So you're you're in two different groups. So you, even if you're playing the cooperative version of code names, it's still cooperative teams. Uh, the competitive version, you're of course against each other. And personally, I prefer the cooperative version, but to each their own. I've always felt like at the end of any game of code names, I feel like I got to know the people I was playing with a bit better. Like without it being that we're playing a get to know you game. No, we're playing a word game with teams, right? Like it doesn't feel like you're trying to get to know each other. And just by the end of it, I've always felt a little closer to the people I played with. Plus, this is another good one for not getting personal at all, unless someone really does want to sit there and explain how hose, bike, tuba, and elephant are all connected to hairspray. I find when you don't get the clues, that's when, you know, if, 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 you, if you fail, that's when the explanations start coming out. And they're right. like, oh, but you didn't, didn't you see that this, this, and this? And, and everyone goes, really? <laughs> or, or what? Or, oh, of course, I was thinking, you know, triangles instead of squares or something now up next i think we need deanna to explain how zensu fits on this list how it's a great game to get to know your opponent because you know i can just see gwen coming home and being like you must beat me at zentu to date my daughter i'm dying because you slipped this in since i read the show notes earlier <laughs> but seriously so you play Zensu with me so I can get to know you honestly i don't i don't think it's a it's actually a bad choice which is why i tossed it in there is those the, the only problem is the 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 two player nature, right? So that that's that's where it kind of falls down as a get to know you game. But playing you know intellectual two player abstracts, you get to learn a lot about your opponents. Uh, a funny, I mean, Zensu actually did pop into my head earlier. I just figured a two player game was was uh, vetoed, so I'm amused. This next one's already come up in the chat room. Uh, yeah, the chat rooms ones. called this one out. Someone in the chat called this one out. Uh, someone else in the chat I played with the last time I had this game on the table, and that is Medium. Um, this I kind of rediscovered, right? We, we've had the game for a while. We really pushed it when it first came out because we loved it. No one had really heard of it. But I rediscovered it during our last Brews and Board Games night. I brought it out, and I'm like, man, this is better than I remember. This is a fantastic game. Um, this is good to get to know each other, both due to its theme, because while well, you're making a psychic connection, how better could you get to know someone without connecting with them psychically? Um, but the entire mechanic of trying to end up on the same page and trying to meet in the middle, right? That's the whole point of this game. Now, for people who don't know Medium, because it's still not a lot of pop people talking about this one, is each player chooses a word from a bunch of cards in their hand, and then the players count three, two, one. And they're trying to say at the exact same time the word that's in the medium, what's between them, what fits best between the two words that are on the table. If they get it right, they get some points. But if they get it wrong, they get two more tries. But on the next tries, you have to reuse the words you just said instead of the ones in the cards. This is a raucous party game, gets lots of laughs. Um, we were ridiculously loud at the board game event. I think we were the loudest game there with the high fives after nailing one on the first try. Uh, Medium is a fantastic game. Yeah, despite the uh, the, the amusing uh, psychic concepts, the game itself is just fantastic. And, yes. and, and it's fun. Uh, and yes, you're definitely learning and connecting. Uh, it can be a little weird, perhaps, trying to, you know, make those same connections with uh, different generations. It's certainly yeah. easier if you've got shared life experiences that you're working from. But then, you know, trying to connect with another generation is, you know, part of uh, part of what you need to do sometimes. Well, I'll admit I've seen like couples who do way worse than strangers sometimes. So as usual, we've also got some honorable mentions for you. And after that, we will be listing off the games the chat suggested that we haven't gotten to ourselves. So my first one is the long out of print. Man, I wish someone would publish this dang game. 
I've been trying, Jay and Sen. I've been, I've been pushing people. I go to cons and recommend to publishers to pick up your game. And that is, but wait, there's more. This is my favorite pitch game. This is, you have to improv, right? It it, it, it hits all those bad marks that um some, some of the ones we mentioned earlier have, um, like Contrabanter. But I, this is the best pitch game ever played. You, you are given a product, you are given a feature, you start pitching it to the team. Part way through, you flip a card and go, but wait, there's more and have to add in another feature. I adore this game. I wish this game was out there more. And it is hilarious. This is one of those, I don't know, you're, you're not asking anything personal, right? Everyone's just telling their own story about the product that's in front of them. And you're going to learn quite a bit about those people by what they choose to say about their products. Yeah, I know um, I, <laughs> this one isn't for D. We all I think we can all uh, we all know that one. But I love this game. I've only I've only ever played it I think in the middle of the night at uh, um, at, uh, at one of the 24 hour gaming events. But it's so much fun and it's just the right kind of improv. It's not complete. Yeah. You got you get a couple of seconds. You can get some time, a little bit of time to think uh, until you get except for that one. You know, but but wait, there's more moments when you got to jump right into it. Uh, and it, you know, if you like thinking on your feet, um, it's fantastic. I actually like this game from a distance go. of about eight to 10 feet away. <laughs> I like hearing other people play it. I just don't want to take part in it. Yeah. Dio sit on the side and vote <laughs> on who had the best pitch, but she doesn't want to play. All right. The other, the, the next honorable mention is, um, I'm going to call it the resistance cause it's kind of my favorite of the groups, but any of the werewolf isotopes, um, you all know all three of us aren't really a fan of these style of games, but I have to admit they can be great to getting to know other people. And honestly, I enjoy these games. Um, I, and, and like one night ultimate werewolf, all of those the most when I'm playing with people I've never met before, like an actual group of strangers. And even more so if all those strangers don't know each other either, because one of the problems I find with those games, people tend to play favorites, right? They, they won't. They won't pick their friend or they won't murder their friend or whatever. They 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 collude together. And that's, that's part of what I don't like about the game where if everyone, no one knows each other, it goes down to actual deduction, right? And that's where I find these games enjoyable. Plus, I can't, like, but people love this, right? People have been doing werewolf at cons to get to know each other, like, as long as cons have been around, as far as I know. <laughs> the last one I'm going to throw down um, is Mysterium. Now, I don't think D or Sean have played this one themselves, but this is the other one with code names that came up on like every get to know each other game list out there. Um, I didn't include it because I've only played once and honestly, it was a total flop. Now, I've heard the game is very group dependent and I have a feeling that's what happened to me, right? I played the game with the wrong group. Come on, I hated Psy that first for a similar reason. Um, this is a game all about interpreting funky art cards, but instead of just like picking cards and clues, Instead, one player is a ghost who's using those cards to try to get the other players to solve a murder. Uh, Deanna might actually really dig this one because of the whole murder mystery puzzle feel to it. So it honestly fits along with a bunch of the games we mentioned above. I'm going to throw it in the honorable mentions. Enough people do dig Mysterium. I just need to find the right group to see if it's possibly better for me than it was the first time I played. Next up, we have Monopoly, because if they try to put money on free parking, they're out the door. Okay. Uh <laughs> All right. How so to get to know the guy who comes over is you start quizzing them on what are your house rules from Monopoly. So we're going to take a jump into our chat room now because they started early on here, uh, jumping in. And we've got first up, uh, well, everyone mentioned Diplomacy, the, the yes. ultimate get to know you game. See, the problem is I don't want to voice Diplomacy on anyone. It's too big. It's too long. It's It's not hard, but like. I don't know that 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 to me that's a little over the top. Is uh is classic risk the next step after that or? I mean, are we going in Texas and allies? I mean, you know, if you're gonna. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Well, honestly, any of those games, right? Whereas personally, I'd go with like you know Game of Thrones, the board game. Even though I still haven't read the books or watch a series, but like for that style of uh, someone's gonna screw you over eventually, but you're good friends up until then. That's my recommended game. <laughs> Uh, Roger comes in with Dungeon Pets, a uh, bit heavy, but uh, fun with new people. Okay. I, I have only ever played Dungeon Lords, not Pets, so I can't comment to that one, but we'll toss it on our list and throw it in the show notes. Uh, Seas of Havoc can be fun with more outgoing people. A good old-fashioned shoot 'em up can be a blast. Mm, that, that one's got a curve to it, a learning curve to it. Yeah. That's, that's my concern with Seas of Havoc. Um, I, I get the feeling like it, with a bunch of people who already knew how to play it, I could see getting along, but 
again, you know, if you if you're new to that game or or game, especially new to gaming in particular, that one mm-hmm. could. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I just I don't I don't see how that one say better than Artemis Project or any other board game I just like. And I'm going to hang out with people and play a game together. I'm not sure why that one would stick out. As, well, as something he, better. he called out the shoot 'em up aspect yeah. the, okay. the, the you're targeting each other and stuff that is different than Artemis Project. Right. True. You're, yeah. Yeah. Fair. The, the, the interaction's a little higher. Now, personally, I think I would go with. Um, oh, I had it in my head and then now I lost it. It's the one where it's a pirate game. Comes with metal coins. You've got a bunch of islands, and you actually control two ships. One is like the um, merchant marines, and the other is a pirate. And you're trying to pick up Black Fleet. I think it's the game I'm thinking of for something where you're shooting each other and take that, and it's a lot quicker, faster game, quick playing, more of a not. I wouldn't say a party game, but it's definitely a lighter game. Or that same rapid fire pirate stealing from each other, burying treasure kind of feel. Fair enough. Uh, next up, we've got Eggman Jr. recommending Feed the Kraken. Says it plays well with random folk. He's played it at conventions recently. Okay. I think that's another werewolf isotope, though I don't know what makes that one stick out compared to others. One of the things you do have to watch for is bad feelings, right? Um, like Get Bit to me or Walk the Plank to me are not good get to know you games. Yes, you're going to get to know the players you're playing with and figure out who the a-hole is, right? That's That's what you're going to learn during that game. <laughs> Uh, Darkling Blights jumping in there uh, right along the lines with DNIs. As someone who's terrible at lying and bluffing, I tend to avoid game with traitors as a rule with very few exceptions. Also, yeah. with anxiety issues and quietness, don't really like playing games that make you open up. Fair enough. I hear you. Yeah, no, we're there. There's a lot of that. Uh, a lot of that in, with some of us. Um, uh, well, I gotta say, I think some of the games on our list might still like enjoy them because again, a lot of them the opening up's not required, and honestly, tends to kind of happen, right? People loosen up and it comes out. Uh, Ryan indicating that Mo filters his daughter's boyfriend through a gauntlet of gameplay experiences. <laughs> uh, where are we here? Um, now I will admit, my daughter probably does that with any perspective <laughs> person <laughs> she's interested in. So. What's Definitely a little judgmental game? based on games. Uh, and then Josh Rama, first time uh, back in the chat in a while, uh, mentions the Jordan Draper games, Colorful and Praise, which are both very social and fun games where you learn each other. I want and both of those. I do not know. I love it when someone shows up and it's like, boom, here's two games you never heard of. And then one like, we do damn. know is Hughes and Cues. Yes, I, I guess. Hughes and Q's, I, I liked so much. I love the concept of, and I just You've had some hits and misses with it. It it, it hasn't yeah. always it hasn't always come. It up hasn't or... always hit, and I, and I just find people say the same things over and over and over and over. How many times can you say eggshell for like off white and blue sky for blue and grass for green and like I, it, people don't get creative enough? I find in that game, that, you get the right group of people, sure. But that one might be an interesting know. one to bring to. Walkerville again. That's one we of those have. ones where it's, it's you know, been on the table. More experiences, it might you know, yeah. Just give it a try again. We, now that you now that we have more flexibility in what we can bring because of uh, yeah. the house uh, finally uh, getting getting back uh, into a little bit more order. Yeah. Um, you know, games like that. You know, it might be might be fun to toss in there and see what people think. I swear I we had like it at the first event. Cues and cues where it can really break down is if it's a group of people that have been playing and start using common. Mm. words it just happens and then you bring someone else in and now they don't know that fire engine red is that one you know that's that's just gonna eh. yeah uh, that's why Roger i think it might be good at walkerville it's is why yeah. because it's just that you know they're only ever gonna play it once you know that's the mm-hmm. sort of roger mentioned uh booba kiki which <laughs> that's it thanks roger i don't know if that was intentional but booba kiki <laughs> is from our sponsor grand gamers guild uh We'll be talking about that in just a second, so I'm not going to, oh, but you won't be able to get that one at Origins. Um, I don't remember if it's still live on Kickstarter or ended soon. You should be able to pre-order a late pledge. But yes, that's another one of those um, color association Dixit style games, right? Using the the booby kiki effect. So yeah, definitely go check that one out. And when it's available on Grand Gamers Guild website, use code bellhop to save 10%. And Thanks, Mark. Speaking of that. <laughs> and that is the uh, the end of our list from the chat. All right, well, that's it for our talk about icebreakers and getting to know you games. What did we miss? Is there a game in this genre that you love that we skipped over or maybe haven't even tried? 
Let us know all about it in the comments below. Or better yet, start up a conversation on our Discord server, which you can find at discord.tabletopbellhop.com.